You're watching the Celtics on Concast Sportsnet. Rejected by Perkins inside. Ray Allen takes it to the basket. It's game time. It's game time. Here's Mike and Donnie. All right, Ray, thanks very much. We're just about set to go here in Miami as the crowd is meeting the starting lineup. So let's do the same and check out our Southwest Airlines starting lineup. For tonight, Rajon Rondo, Ray Allen, as usual, in the backcourt, Paul Pierce, Rasheed Wallace, and Kendrick Perkins along the front line as KG remains out with his knee issues, docked in his sixth season as the Celtics head coach. On the other side, for the Miami Heat, as we mentioned up the top, come in off a big win over Atlanta here the other night. Carlos Arroyo has been their point guard for a while. Dwayne Wade at the other guard spot. Quentin Richardson, Michael Beasley, who had a big night against the Hawks, and Jermaine O'Neal, who was a game-time decision. But we'll start at center for Eric Spolstra, who is the youngest coach in the NBA. Tonight's Honeydew List is brought to you by Honeydew Donuts. Try the fantastic new white chocolate snowflake coffee, the ultimate drink on a cold winter day. Enjoy the local flavor of Honeydew. What do you got there, Donnie? No pun intended, Mike. It is a little chilly here in Miami, but the Heat will get off to good starts. They've done it before, but they've also they've won. They've also lost. you got to weather the storm if you're the Celtics. Piece it together. No KG. You have Rashid in the starting lineup. Paul Pierce back. Going to watch his minutes. Doc's going to have to figure out how to put this, these pieces together to come out of here with the win. Tonight's sideline reports are brought to you by Simmons, the smart choice in plumbing products. Here he is. Greg Dickerson. Talked to Paul Pierce and Rajon Rondo earlier today about their injuries. Paul Pierce told me, I'm not 100%, but, I, but I'm comfortable enough to get back on the floor. I do continue to get better. He said conditioning might be an issue. He said, he said you sit out for a couple of weeks, and it's bound to be an issue. As for Rajon Rondo, he told me, I'm fine. The hamstring feels better. And he said he's not necessarily worried about injuring it any further. Guys? Let's take a look at our Subaru key matchup here as we begin tonight's game against the Heat. Career head-to-head -head numbers for both Ray Allen and Dwayne Wade. Edge to Ray and wins. Much better three-point shooter, obviously. Assists and points are in Wade's favor. Donnie, let me ask you. I'm sure this happened to you once or twice in your athletic career. You start a season, you're maybe a third of the way into the season, a fourth of the way into the season. You get hurt, you get down for a couple of weeks. How much of your conditioning do you lose? Well, it, it depends on what kind of shape you were in when you got hurt. I, I think for a guy, if you're talking about a, a Paul Pierce type player, he seems to always be in shape. He may not look like he's in the greatest shape, but he seems to always be in great basketball shape. And I think Paul Pierce is one of those guys who understands he's been around the league long enough. When you're a veteran, you know how to take care of your body. You know how to stay in shape when you're not playing. A little tougher for younger guys, but as far as Paul Pierce and his conditioning, I don't worry about that. But again, Doc Rivers said he will watch his minutes and keep a close eye on that. I don't think it's so much for the conditioning as much as it is to make sure that that knee is okay. Tonight's injury report is brought to you by Shields MRI, the official MRI provider of the Boston Celtics. Kevin Garnett with his knee. Marquise Daniels, who also made the trip, but still has that hard cast on his thumb, and is probably post-All-Star break before we're going to see Marquise back. Eddie House just under the weather a little bit, should be back with the team in Atlanta. I was told it was a late-arriving crowd here in Miami. I certainly <laughs> hope so. Because there's a lot of those colored seats right there you can see on the top of your screen. They're trying to fall out. That's right. No sympathy. Right? You're in the hotel. People are talking about how cold it is. I say, you want, you want to talk about cold? Go up to Boston or Connecticut for okay. a couple days. We'll, we'll show you cold. All right. Everybody has a lot of meeting and greeting going on. A lot of hugging going yeah, on out there. Carlos Arroyo and Rasheed Wallace, of course, played together in Detroit. There's a lot of love going around here. I don't know. I, I remember a lot of those things used to be perfunctory. Now they're, now they're pretty serious. A little too much for me. <laughs> yeah. Come on, guys. Joey Crawford throws it up. Arroyo's got the tip, and we are underway. Dwayne right Wade taking the great circle route there. I thought he was headed to the wrong basket for a second. Rasheed gets Beasley. Beasley again has had a couple of big first halves in the last couple of weeks. Most recent on Monday night. Rebound taken by Pierce. O'Neal chirping for a foul he doesn't get. 
inside. Perkins, the two. Nice always, look by Rondo. Always a terrific matchup. You and I talked about that this morning with Kendrick Perkins and Jermaine O'Neal. And, uh, you know, not just because he's in green, but I think Perk has his number. I just think the physicality of the game is a little bit too much for O'Neal when it comes to playing against Perk. Wade. Seven on the shot clock. O'Neal knocks it down. We also talked about that, too, how Jermaine O'Neal has the range on that jump shot to about 17 feet, and he will use that, especially if it gets a little too physical for Kendrick Perkins. And it is a tougher guard for Perk that far from the basket. Ray off the bounce, gets double teamed inside again to Perkins. He's got Beasley this time. Faces up on him, puts it on the floor, uses his bulk, misses the hook shot. Everything but the bucket there for Perk. Beasley, no. Tipped nicely by Wade. So you got to watch Dwayne Wade everywhere. With the ball in his hand, without the ball. It's going to be important for Ray to put a body on him because he won't get that much help boxing Wade out. Ray gets into the paint, gets two. Love the body control. Yeah. Even, you know, at the age Ray is, he still knows how to get in the air, hang, and stay yeah. square. He was making that shot as a freshman at UConn, too. He <laughs> was. Same <laughs> shot. Same shot. Cuts off Wade in the baseline, Allen does. Oh. Yeah, too easy. Too much reaching. Again, Jermaine O'Neal knows that physically down on that block, he just doesn't want to contest with Kendrick Perkins, but he knows he can face up. He can put it on the floor well enough. He's going to have to do a better job than just reaching in on him. Gray, this time deep, no. Rebound taken by Beasley all alone under the basket. Arroyo the other way. Arroyo with the dribble into the paint. Tries to lay it down and does successfully to O'Neal. Good start for Jermaine O'Neal, but we've seen this before, Mike. He, he gets off to a very, very good start. And then he kind of fades, hoping that's <laughs> going to be the yeah, case no, again tonight. It has been his track record, though. Pierce. Got Kirk, and Kirk's got a royal trying to tell Rondo to get away. <laughs> and then when O'Neal came over, Rondo was left open for two. A great job by Perk, though. Patience, looking over the defense. You see a guy coming, not panicking, finding a nice, nice pass to Rondo underneath. Outside shooting pretty well to open the game here. It's cold in this building. We're not exaggerating that by any stretch. It's really cool in the building. Ray Allen trying to find some room baseline. Can't throws it away. Arroyo with the turnover. Celtics are back defensively. Beasley. Rebound Pierce. I don't mind him shooting that shot, Mike. He's not a great three-point shooter. Shoots about 21% from there. Pierce takes it all the way to the basket, and Paul will get to the free throw line. Jermaine O'Neal is going to pick up the foul. And this is what I like to see Paul Pierce doing early. Keeping the dribble alive, hanging in the air, getting the body from O'Neal, not settling for jump shots early. And we know at times players like to get themselves going by shooting jump shots. I like that Paul's made the effort to try to get himself to the free throw line early. Well, as you can see, Paul is all wrapped up from the waist down as he's got the a sleeve over the knee with the infection and then a wrapping on his left calf. Richardson with the missed free throw. 8-7, heat by one. Arroyo again penetrates, loses it on the way up, and it goes in. That's not a good sign. <laughs> Rasheed has a pass just go off his fingertips out of bounds. Second Boston turnover here. And this ball just slips out of Arroyo's hand. Rondo looks like he gets a little piece of that. <laughs> Richardson deep. Knocks down a three. Oh, you got to run out at him. Yeah, you do. Different guard than Dwayne Wade, obviously. He wants to catch and shoot from out there. Celtics again going at Beasley. 
Rashid. Rashid takes him across the lane, has a chance for a three-point play. Great move by Rashid. And Michael Beasley, one part of his game defensively, he just does not know how to guard down there. You can't put your body into a guy this big. This is not college anymore. That's a college defensive guard there. You got to put a forearm into him because Rashid Wallace is just, he's too savvy. He's been around long enough, and obviously he's got those long arms to shoot over the top. You got to be more physical. And they'll let you use that forearm. They will. They'll let you use a forearm and an open palm. But you put your body on him. <laughs> Guys are too strong and too talented at this level to play defense like you're in college. He's still up three. Almost five minutes gone here, first quarter. Beasley off the bounce, and there's a reaching foul on Rashid. And that's where the communication is going to be very important for Rashid. It's a tough guard for him out on the perimeter against Beasley. Perk's going to have to yell at him, send him middle, send him baseline, send him towards the help is the idea. away by Rashid talking to some of the Miami people earlier there I think Beasley really is a four for the reason you just mentioned that fours can't cover him away from the basket yeah. threes can I don't care for the three-point shooting though if I'm his coach I'd like him to get more work inside that three-point arc Rondo picks up his first foul that's the second on the team team fouls are even at two apiece Miami by three, both clubs shooting 60% or better. Wade hasn't forced anything yet. Gives it up to Arroyo. And that's going to be a foul on Jermaine O'Neal. That's going to be a second. And, and a lot of the time when Jermaine O'Neal starts to fade after starting very hot, it's because he has lazy fouls like that. That's just mm -hmm. a situation you just have to get back. You got to be smarter, especially when you get going early and your team knows you got it going. They're going to come to you, but you're doing them no good of sitting on the bench with foul trouble. Joel Anthony is going to check in, and O'Neal will sit with those two fouls here, less than six minutes gone in the first quarter. <laughs> Pierce trying to get a spot down low, gets it, kicks it back to Perk. Rashid will try a three and knock it down. Great ball movement, set it all up. I love the look down stairs for per from Perk to, to Pierce and then back out and Perk, not shooting that 15 footer, knowing that Rashid is open. Rashid out of the blocks quickly here with six. Give Wade that shot, I know he made it, but to give him that shot, he's not a good three point no, shooter. he's about 26, 27%. Rashid again goes to Pierce. Pierce, who has feasted on Richardson in the past, gets in traffic, can't finish it, and Leon Wood on the other side's got a foul. And it's going to be on Richardson, I believe. It's great to see Paul Pierce's timing here, putting the body in, probably got a smack there, and then he finally gets the call, staying with it, and not just throwing anything up and letting the refs decide. He really forced the issue. Foul wasn't on number five, was on 5-0, and that's Anthony, so... The bigs for Miami continue to pick up quick fouls here. 16-14, Boston trailing by two. Here's two of three at the line. Boston back to within one. Beasley, no. Nice job by Perkins as he had Anthony boxed out nicely. Pierce gets it up quickly to Ray. Ray gets through on the baseline and gets two. Heads up play there by Pierce. Getting the ball ahead, not walking it up. Forcing Miami to have to make the play. Ray Allen, good job getting to the rim. And Miami is going to take a timeout as the Celtics have taken the lead. 5.38 left to go in the first quarter. 10-3 run by Boston. They lead at 17-16. Celtics shooting 75% over the first five and a half, make it six and a half minutes here. And it's 17-16. They got a one-point lead. Celtics excited to announce the new club, Green Kids, the official fan membership club for fans 14 years of age or under. Become a member today and enjoy exclusive benefits like a welcome pack with great school supplies, a club Green Kids membership card, and special discounts at the team store. 
Now, memberships are just 20 bucks, and a portion of the proceeds go to the Shamrock Foundation. To purchase your Club Green Kids membership now, visit Celtics.com. Let's take a look at tonight's Kia card, presented by Kia Motors. Kia, the power to surprise. No surprises here with Dwayne Wade. 2008-9 named NBA All-First Team and defensive second team. Miami's all-time leader in just about everything you can think of. Tenth highest playoff scoring average all time. 26 points a game. That's tonight's key card. And there's Dwayne Wade right on cue. Nicely done, Dwayne. 1870. That's, that's what he wants to do. He wants to get inside that paint. Stay in front of him. He struggles trying to beat you over the top, but if you let him get in the paint, he's dangerous. Here's a little handoff. Rondo goes baseline, dumps it down nicely to Perkins. The Celtics always seem to get you in a position where you need one more help, well, you know, help from one more teammate. The second help may come, but the third one is where they always hurt you on that weak side. Wade again taking it to the basket, lost it on the way up, got it back, laid it in. But good job though, Ray, trying to stay in front of him. Rashid showing up, he needed one more guy to show up. And head, just really a heady play by Dwayne Wade. I thought that ball was going out of bounds. Celtics have hit seven of their first nine shots. Foul is gonna be on Beasley trying to stay with Ray Allen. Uh, and ball movement's really gonna hurt you if you're the Heat, if you can't get that extra help here. Two guys recover, you need one more. Dwayne Wade tries to reach over, just not gonna get it done. You have to make the extra effort play on defense against the Celtics. They force you to do that. If you don't, they make you pay. So Beasley joins O'Neal on the bench with two personal fouls, and Udonis Haslam comes into the game. Celtics five of six at the line, seven of nine from the field. He's giving Ray a hard time yesterday about his free throw shooting. He's only at 90%. Um, we'll give him the benefit of the doubt. It's like 90 point something. We go, we'll round up. Yep. But Steve Nash is right around 94. Mm -hmm. we got a little ways to go. Raymond. The thing is, when you shoot it that well, if you miss two, <laughs> that's it. He takes it like 15 <laughs> in a row to get it exactly. back. Exactly. <laughs> Just went right into Rondo there. Well, Rondo did the good job. I, I just think that Dwayne Wade is so good at creating the contact here. See, Rondo was moving forward. They're going to call that every time, even though Dwayne Wade probably initiated the contact. Rondo backs up. Maybe it's a different story. Rondo still talking things over with Courtney Kirkland. You got to know if you're if you're the Celtics, any team that comes into this building, you have to know that. Dwayne Wade has been complaining most of the season and probably because the teams really they're only a couple games over 500 But because of their woes he's complaining about fouls not getting the calls that he expects and you have to expect as a, a, an opponent coming in here that he's going to start to get those calls Ray Allen Nice block there by Wade. He did get it before it got to yeah. the glass. Those are the ones you got to dunk. Yep. You got to go in hard and dunk those. We know Ray can still get up there. Great play by Dwayne Wade. Richardson gives it up. Haslam doesn't hesitate. Knocks down the shot. I've Solid always, player. I've always liked him, Mike. I really have. He's got that nice 15, 16 foot jump shot. Just enough to stretch the defense. Works hard on the glass. Rashid size advantage on Haslam. Looks for a cutter. It's Perkins. The constant motion. There it is again where the Miami Heat are looking and pointing, but no one's going as that third help guy. Ray Allen saw that one coming. Gets it ahead to Rondo. That one was too late. Got to love the defense. Great job by Ray. He understands. Listen, Dwayne Wade is strong. If he gets into my body, they're going to probably call a foul on me. So you know what? I'm going to beat him to the catch. And that's exactly what he did. Great timing there for the steal. Approaching three minutes to go here for his quarter. Haslam loses the handle. Rashid got a hand in there. And then Kirk is fouled as he tried to make the outlet pass. Now this is just terrific defense by Ray. 
He's going to tell Dwayne Wade, I'm not going to let you get into my body. Dwayne Wade leaning back. Ray Allen getting that arm around. Smart play. Rondo gets it up quick off the glass. Goaltending will take the two. And Perk off that foul will get the other way as the heater over the limit. Rondo gets a rest. Any impression one way or the other, Rondo, first game back? He looked good. I, I think he looks... I think he looks pretty good. I'd say 91, 92% is about right <laughs> for Johnny. I, I just think back to that game in Phoenix where he was literally 50% and to me was still offensively the best player on the floor. And, and Steve Nash, you know, with all of his accolades and as great of a point guard as he has been over his career and still is, could not stay in front of Rondo really at 50% of his speed. But I'd much rather him at 91 or above. Perk misses a couple, and the foul on the other end is going to go against Tony Allen. Glenn Davis coming into the ball game for the Celtics, and Perk will sit down. Perk goes to the bench with six points, one rebound, two assists. And now Perk is going to stay in the game, and it'll be Rashid who comes out. Wallace to the bench, also with six points and an assist, one personal foul. Interesting that both of those, I don't know if you saw that graphic, they're just playing. Interesting that both of those Canadian born players will be playing in Miami. Yeah. <laughs> Jamal McClure and Anthony. We know they're smart then. As far away from the cold as possible, right? Here's a look at McClure. One time NBA All Star. All Star, that is true. So, an interesting stat on him 600 career games, over 200 with four fouls. Or more. No one can ever say he's soft. Perk. He gets back from behind. I think that's going to be on Wade, or are they going to give it to the big guy, Anthony? We'll check it out. We got a timeout. 2.50 to go. I don't want to. We're back with just under three minutes to go here in the first quarter. Tied at 25. CSNNE.com goes farther, digs deeper, and breaks it down like nobody else can. Curran, McAdam, Blakely, and Haggerty dish all the latest dirt on your favorite Boston teams. All the insider info you would want is on CSNNE.com. It's delivered by Roche Brothers. Let's check in with Greg. Paul Pierce's injury has him feeling not so much like a kid. He said he didn't really think long term about the injury, but he did think about the fact that he said, I'm getting old now. Paul said, you know what? I think, wow, when stuff like this happens, I'm 32 years old. That's more than a lifetime in the NBA. As for the injuries, maybe it's the miles piling up. Maybe it's just old age. Old age at 32, according to Paul Pierce. Guys. Don't, want, don't want to hear it. Don't want to hear it. Maybe not more than a lifetime in the NBA, but just about a lifetime <laughs> in the NBA. Look at Perk there. Now, he had a bout of food poisoning. He looks to me like he's lost weight. I mean, he looks like, to me, he looks like he's dropped five pounds. That's the thing. He's definitely more ripped, and that's the first place I look as guys their shoulders, biceps, and then their face. You can see it a lot in their cheeks. And you, you might be right, Mike. He doesn't, you know, he's not that, he doesn't have that full, you know, that, that you, you usually see that with Kendrick Perkins, you know. I'm not feeling that jersey yeah, out tonight. I know. Sometimes he's kind of built like a refrigerator. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's not, he's not. He's cut one now. Haslam gets it in the hands of Wade, who comes up firing and knocks it down. Now, now let's not be mistaken. Dwayne Wade, as much as you'd like him to, to be a jump shooter if you're the opponent or you're the Celtics tonight, he's a scorer. So he's going to find ways. He's going to make shots, and it doesn't mean he's not going to make a jumper. Ray Allen gets it back to Perk, loses the handle momentarily, gets it back. Now trying to back his way in. Six on the shot clock. Can't get two out of it. Rebound Haslam. Wade the other way. Uses the screen, takes a tough shot, makes it. He likes the left side of the floor, particularly below the free throw line, falling away. That is his shot. 14 first quarter points for Wade. Under two minutes to play here in the first. Tony Allen loses Chalmers. And that's 
an up and down, yeah, and, as we used to call it. And, and, and T.A. probably, and I, I like what he's doing. He's trying to be unselfish, but had a lane to the basket. you got to go in and lay that ball up or even dunk that ball. Sheldon Williams into the game. Paul Pierce gets his first rest. Ten minutes for Paul. Three points all at the free throw line. And three rebounds. Brian Scalabrini also seeing first action. Wade again. Takes it. Well short this time. And it's going to be Boston ball. The Heat getting away with one there. Yeah. Because I thought Anthony fouled Scal. So it's Scal. <laughs> Taking a look. Unless this ball was out of bounds first, that's a foul before yeah, yeah, clearly, <laughs> you know, the ball's out of bounds on Miami. Scal right off the catch. Nope. Davis good hustle effort to try to get that rebound, but Haslam got a Haslam. He's an excellent rebound. Has a little trouble getting the handle right there. And Jump ball. Oh, a timeout is given to Miami. Wow. And it'll be a 20-second timeout. But I love deflections. You don't get a deflection there. Haslam may have a layup. You know how much I love deflections. Ray Allen remains the only starter on the floor for the Celtics. Chance to remind you, tonight's game presented by Triple Hops Brewed Miller Lite. Taste greatness. We talked about Talked about Dwayne Wade and, and the things that he brings and the, the, the issues that he brings to a game. Look at that. Three guys around him still figures out how to create the space from the help coming from the big down on that baseline. And you know, the guy's done it all here. And, and the one thing you, you hear from him is maybe some complaints about not getting the calls. But the other thing is his teammates getting him to open areas. It's very important when you have a guy like Dwayne Wade, to run him off screen, set good screens for him, because you know, in the end, he's gonna make the right play, and that could be you rolling to the basket. He wants to do whatever is gonna make this team win. We know that. You and I both saw in some of the clips that we read to get ready for games that uh, some question whether Beasley and Wade can play together. Yeah, I, you know, I have that written down in my notes, Mike, that these two guys don't play together. They're on the same team, but they do not play together. Stays with it again and gets two more. He's got a 16-point first quarter, 7 of 11 from the floor. Ray Allen for three. I, at home. I like that. I, I want to see Ray coming off looking to score more aggressively tonight in this game because he can do it. Dwayne Wade is going to try to shoot the gap. He, Ray will be able to create that space to knock that shot down. Heat go to Wade again, tries to come through in the baseline, and does. Help's got to come a little bit sooner, especially that low on the block when Ray has him one-on-one. -on -one. The Heat is shooting 61%. The Celtics are shooting 67%. Tony Allen trying to find something off the dribble again. Beats Chalmers, takes it to the basket this time, and an offensive foul is called. Well, you like the fact that he's getting to the basket. I don't mind this charge because he made up his mind that he was going all the way, and that's a tough call to take. Udonis Haslam really took the charge with his arms and then just fell down. It's a tough call there for T.A. He will look for the final shot as the game clock is off. Leading 33-30. The shot clock, I should say, is off. The game clock, of course, is running. Wade over the top. <laughs> Young Durrell Wright gets himself a bucket, and Tony got a shot off but couldn't put it down. And the Heat have got themselves a five-point lead. Their largest lead of the quarter was six. They're up by five. As the Celtics, a little under man here in Miami, find themselves in an offensive shootout early. 35-30, Heat by five at the end of one. Cover all parts of the country here, starting in Miami, going to Atlanta, then all the way up to Toronto before we finish this road trip. Not a lot of people out walking around on a cool night here in Miami. Hey, the most convenient way 
to reach Tommy and me is by emailing a question to Tommy and Mike's mailbag on CSNNE.com. Your question could be used live in the pregame show or on the website. It's the most convenient way to talk directly to us from TD Bank, America's most convenient bank. Let's check in with Greg. Doc Rivers is not happy about the defensive effort of his clubs at 35 points. There was no defensive presence at all in that first quarter. Singing out his bigs for not helping on Dwayne Wade, telling his guys, Dwayne Wade's on the floor and we don't even know it. Eight for 12, shooting 18 points for D. Wade in that first quarter, guys. Let's take a look at the first quarter stats. They're presented by Ace Tickets. Call 1-800-MY-SEATS. Celtic have Rondo back in the game with Tony Allen, Glenn Davis, Sheldon Williams, and Brian Scalabrini. 63% shooting for both teams. Miami 6-0, second chance points. Sheldon Williams picking up an offensive foul. It is Chalmers, Beasley, Anthony, Haslam, and Wright. Haslam trying to pick off Rondo. They skip a pass to Wright. He gets it back in Haslam's hands. Bullies his way to the basket. And drew a foul. Wow, out of control. Yeah, he was. Well, the official bailed him out a little bit there. Puts his head down here. Guy stepping in. Yeah, that was a pretty good step in yeah. by Glenn Davis. Well, you're on the road. You got to understand that if you're the Celtics. So the calls, you have to expect them to not go your way. But what you have to do is continue to play intelligent basketball. Don't get caught up in, in really an argue, argument with the officials. Just play basketball. That's what Doc Rivers is over there for, besides drawing up X's and O's and getting you guys in order. He can talk to the officials. Haslam missed the first. Rattles home the second. Miami, an early 10 6 edge in rebounding. They had a huge rebounding night the other night against Atlanta. Out rebounded the Hawks 52 to 30. And you can see what the Heat are doing. They're trying to keep the ball out of Rajon Rondo's hands since he's the primary ball handler. Here comes Glenn Davis rumbling up the middle of the floor. Turns it over. And that's exactly what the Heat want. You put a big guy dribbling the ball who's uncomfortable. And Glenn Davis. You, know, you want him to score, but you want him to be smart with the ball. You can't afford turnovers on the road. Six Boston turnovers in the game, just two for the Heat. Scal draws Beasley. He comes up shooting short. Rebound to Rondo. Rondo looking to push it. He's got help on the break. Finds Tony Allen. The two. Get Tony Allen out on the break running and let him go and finish. Chalmers, who has lost his starting point guard, John Pierre to Arroyo, and maybe still the way for Austin to come. Rondo the other way. Beasley jumps out effectively on Rondo. Now Rondo, nice look for Tony Allen. Moving without the basketball, T.A. has really started to come into his own, and very quickly after filling in for Paul Pierce is I think that helped his confidence and Doc Rivers showing him listen we believe in you just get out there and do the right thing and that's what he has to do move without the ball when Rondo's probing four points in five minutes and T.A. comes up with a turnover here and then that's a tough call there yeah, that's a tough call. I didn't think he took another step I thought he got rid of it I, did, I thought he did too and You know, this is a great look at Rondo and him busting out, looking like that hamstring is in really, really good condition. And T.A. finishing with the off offhand and move without the basketball. Rondo has great vision. He'll find you. Chalmers, a lot of dribbling. Finds Anthony. Anthony. We talked about Chalmers losing his starting role, but this is his 115th consecutive game. And he needs about seven more to be the all-time leader in consecutive games here in Miami. Pretty special. 
Pascal gets a clean look. Can't hit it. Rebound taken down by Wright. Gets it quickly in the hands of Chalmers. Keep the ball in the four-point lead. Chalmers trying to make it six. Can't. Rebound to Sheldon Williams. Rondo's going to slow it down a little bit. Paul Pierce slowly top of your screen making his way to the scorer's table. Tony Allen. Wright guessed correctly. Five on the shot clock. Rondo's got to get something going. Takes it to the basket. Right. Pass. And Sheldon Williams will get to the line. Wasn't much room there, but Rondo found his teammate. Self will get a couple of free throws out of it. 8.56 left to go in the half. We're back in a four-point game, 38-34, 8.56 left to go here in the first half. Celtic fans, Modell Sporting Goods is excited to offer fans a special discount. Now you can bring your ticket stub to any Modell Sporting Goods store within seven days from the date of the game, and you get 15% off your total purchase of regular-priced merchandise. Now to find the nearest Modell Sporting Goods location, just visit Models.com. Models is the official sporting goods retailer of the Boston Celtics. Tonight's NBA news is brought to you by Toyota's official website for deals, buyatoyota.com. Gilbert Arenas is in the NBA news a lot more than he would like to be these days. Suspended without pay indefinitely pending completion of an NBA investigation. David Stern is, quote, his ongoing conduct has led me to conclude that he is not currently fit to take the court in an NBA game. Gilbert and his teammates, it seemed, Donnie, from afar, just wouldn't let this thing go. You would yeah. think the smartest thing to do would be to keep your mouth shut, not, it's not do mimes on the sidelines yeah, like you're shooting each other. It's disappointing, very sad, and you forget who your biggest fans are in this game, and that's kids, you know, and they're, you can influence them. So to me, it's, uh, it's just very sad and disappointing that you, you have an opportunity to do something very special for people like that, fans like that, and... and you know, you choose to use your, your money, a lot of money, in, in the worst way, and that's buying firearms. Just and, and then bringing them into a building at where you work. It's just, shot, uh, it's just all altogether sad and, and very disappointing. I know evidence was presented to a grand jury in Washington D.C. I believe today. I don't think we're going to be seeing Gilbert anytime soon. Scalabrini out on Beasley. Haslam, that's going to be short. Rebound to Williams. Rondo walks it across. Williams now comes out, sets a screen. Rondo kicks it back. Glenn Davis gets a little closer. Too hard with the jump shot. Another rebound to Haslam. I would have liked Glenn to catch and shoot that first one. He's His game is not ready to put the ball on the floor and shoot jump shots yet. Right, little pull-up jumper, and he kissed it home. Did he go to prep school in Connecticut? He did, didn't he? I, I'm not sure. I think he did. Rondo throwing the alley-oop up, nearly threw it in. Davis hangs in there on the offensive glass, continues to hang in there and keeps it alive. And Doc has taken a timeout. Didn't like the way that was going. Takes a full timeout. We'll take it too. 7.57 left to go in the first half. The Heat have got themselves a four-point lead. A lead with about eight minutes to go here in the half. No matter what happens during the week, Michael Felger is going to have something to say about it on Sundays. Join Felger and friends every Sunday night at 10 p.m. on Sports Sunday, presented by Dick's Sporting Goods. Let's check in with Greg. During Celtics pregame live, talk to uh, Heat second-year forward Michael Beasley. Asked him about the difference between his rookie season last year in Miami and his second season. He said, well, last year a lot of teams really tried to go at me defensively. My first year, I really just didn't know what things were going to be like. I thought it was going to be like college. I was a little lackadaisical. This year I took a different approach. I'm older. I think I understand better. Doc Rivers said there's going to be a point in his career he'll be in the top ten in scoring. He's going to be one of those professional scorers because he just knows how to score around the basket and on the perimeter guys about 21 a game over the last three while shooting better than 50 percent he's back on the floor now with Chalmers Wright Haslam and O'Neal O'Neal picked up those two early fouls Rashid is back in for the Celtics with Pierce Rondo Scalabrini and Tony Allen and the heat going very very big 
Tony again gets to the basket. Pachute. Great job. Move without the ball. Michael Beasley cannot guard Tony Allen if he continues to move. Get behind that defense. They can't see you. Again, Rondo will find you. Tony Allen had a kneel there in a mismatch and right knocks down the shot. And you were right, the kid out of South Camp Prep. 6'9, he's he's talented. Rondo skips it back to Pierce, who has yet to take a shot inside Rashid. Turnaround rattles out. Guard now, Tony Allen comes out to defend him. Pierce has got Beasley. Beasley tries to cross him over baseline and does. Well, we talked about him being a scorer. He can put the ball mm -hmm. on the floor. The thing I like about him is he knows how to find scoring areas and he works without the ball in his hand as well. Rondo tried to force it inside, tipped away, picked off by Haslam. And the Heat looking to extend their largest lead of the night, 44-38, six and a half to go in the half. Hey! Chalmers gets to the bucket. Hey! Tip won't go, pulled down by Rashid. Rondo trying to get to the basket, dumps it to Pierce. Pierce hangs and will get to the free throw line again. Rondo has to pull himself up. He seems to be okay. Here comes Perkins and Ray Allen back into the game, and so is Dwayne Wade. Big first quarter. Great, great first quarter. Rondo here. Looked like he got tripped up, but Paul Pierce, look at this, keeps the ball a little bit extended, hanging, trying to draw that foul, and does it. The bounce on the second five of six at the line, Pierce is. That's where he's got all his points. Celtics have it back to four again. Chalmers has to get out of the paint, gives it back to right. He shoots it with four on the clock, misses it. And Rashid is unable to handle it. It goes out of bounds. It'll be Heat basketball, and they'll get a first 24 seconds. Well, Doc was upset with the way the Celtics played defense in that first quarter, but in this quarter, halfway gone by, only nine points. Obviously, Dwayne Wade wasn't in up to this point, but he has to be a little bit happier with that progress in the second quarter defensively. Twelve on the shot clock. Wade with the left hand couldn't finish it, and Ray Allen gets the rebound. Here comes Rondo. Pierce will try a three and knock it down. That's good for Paul. It's nice to see he did his work early in the paint, got got himself to the free throw line. It's nice to see him aggressive from three point range as well. Has made him one himself one of the best three point shooters in the league. Boston has this back to one. 44-43, here's another look at Paul doesn't hesitate, buries it. 5.15 to go in the half. Heat now by one. I don't Tonight's league leaders are brought to you by TD Bank, America's most convenient bank, member FDIC. What this tells me, Donnie, is if you're good, you get the ball in your hands a lot of the time. <laughs> Magic Johnson, Isaiah Thomas, Dwayne Wade, Allen Iverson, all-time leaders in turnovers per game. Dwayne hasn't turned it over much tonight. He's had a pretty good night. Well, he's really gotten to a sweet spot, getting himself into the paint. The help comes late defensively. You can't forget where he is on the floor, but once he posts you up, if you're Ray Allen, your help has to come earlier, and creating space so important when you're, tr when you're trying to shoot a jump shot and be a scorer, and that's exactly what Dwayne Wade knows how to do. And the thing that surprises me most about him, Mike, is over his career, he's missed some games due to injury because I think of the way he plays. He's always on the floor, really makes the extra, extra effort 
but he's played in every game this season, and that has been the difference for this Heat team to be a couple games above 500, and also for you know him to be looking at another year as an All-Star. He's taken 13 shots already in this game. He averages about 20.6 per game, which would be fourth in the league. Only Kobe, Carmelo Anthony, and Monte Ellis take more shots in a game than Dwayne Wade does. He's going to be well above 20.6 tonight at this rate. Chalmers can't get by. Perkins throws it away. Ray Allen might be the easiest steal Ray will ever get in his career. Spins away. Perk. Dwayne Wade picks up that loose ball from him. That's his second. And one of the rare times you'll see Perk getting tangled up with a, a guard and, and the foul not being on him. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Good point. You always hold your breath when Perk is in a play out on the perimeter and there's a guard involved from the other team. Rondo. Pierce's call for an offensive foul set the screen. That was a little questionable. First on Paul. Well, Joey Crawford's point of emphasis tonight looks like illegal screens yeah. or screening to see if guys are there, but it looked like Chalmers just ran into Paul Pierce. It did. Wade trying to take it to the basket again, and he's going to get to the free throw line, and Perk is not happy with Joe Crawford's call. Yeah, well, Dwayne Wade is at his best getting to the basket, but more importantly, if you let him get to the free throw line, he is dangerous, and he's just so elusive in there. And Kendrick Perkins thought he just guided him across the lane. Kind of played defense, yeah. is what it seemed like he did. 29.9 again. against Charlotte. That was a game that the Heat had a big lead in and blew it. Here's the happiest guy in the building right now, Carlos Arroyo. <laughs> Carlos, a lot of rumors that the Heat were going to let him go, and the deadline was either 5 or 6 o'clock this afternoon where teams had to guarantee contracts for the rest of the year. A lot of people thought Arroyo was going to be let go, but instead he made it past the deadline, and he was a lot richer because of it. Rondo, the hard push, keeps right on going at O'Neal. Finds Perk right as nicely done. Almost like a misdirection. Everyone's looking at Pierce in the corner and the, and the direction that Rondo's eyes are going, and he finds Perk behind him. Perk is four of six in the game. That's going to keep him straight in terms of uh, his position on top of the NBA uh, field goal percentage. Just foul on Ray Allen. It, it's starting starting to get a little ugly now. Guys are not being able to to play any D, but here's a great job by Rondo. You see. Pierce and Quentin Richardson overplaying, looking for the, the play to Pierce in the corner, and he finds Perk behind him. Perk is going to pick up that foul. And that is a foul. Yeah. Leave your feet. That is a foul, but you know, all the little tic tac fouls and, and the, the body contact away from the basket that are being called right now. You, it's nice just to let the guys play. You know, play basketball. It's a physical game. Unless there's a foul like you saw Perk there, let the guys play. Wait four or five now at the free throw line. 21 first half points. Yet his Heat are clinging to a one point lead. Misses a bolt. Does the ball lie, Mike? Never. <laughs> Never. I can't resist. Pierce again looking to work on Richardson. Short with the jump shot, and Beasley is there. And that ball didn't come out of Pierce's hand right. I don't think that was a product of his knee. If anyone at home is saying, oh, his knee is bothering him. Beasley throws up a runner, gets nowhere. Rashid comes away with it. Rondo up the middle. Perkins facing up on O'Neal again, directing a little traffic. Up a fall away and knocks it down. Yeah, that's a great move. Perk got him into about three feet and made the fall away at about six or seven. I like that move by Perk. Perk has got a dozen in the game. Leading scorer for Boston. One point game. Beasley lost it behind his back. Ray Allen, another gift steal. 
takes it into the paint. Picked off by Richardson. Wade and Beasley, two on one, and it'll be Beasley. Perkins trying to take a charge. Did not get a whistle. Well, the Celtics have to find a better way to capitalize on the Heat's turnovers and not come down and give the ball right back. Again, you can afford turnovers when you're playing at home, but when you're on the road, it's tough to, tough to overcome. Rondo bounces off Arroyo, and he will get to the free throw line. Now, this is just easy. Perk not wanting to pick up another foul. Smart play by Perk, but Dwayne Wade body control. Beasley for the finish from Wade. Perk tries to take a charge there, yeah. but not going to get that here. Perkins taking his time getting his spot on the lane. And now Rondo will shoot his first free throws of the night. The Celtics are 12 of 15 at the line. The Heat are 6 of 10. Five points and six assists for Rajon here in the first half. Just one rebound. Rebounds, though, are now even at 15 apiece in the game. John makes them both. Boston by one. Richardson slapped away by Pierce from behind. It'll stay Miami ball. Nine seconds on the shot clock. 2.16 to go in the half. Richardson, no daylight there. O'Neal got away with one over the back. Rasheed looked like he had a lot of ball, but he's going to be whistled for the foul. Well, you can tell right now this game is you're not going to look at the box score and say there were a lot of block shots because they're pretty much calling everything. If there's a foul, it was there. Right. I think Murashid probably fouled him with the body, and that's where the official was looking. But you just hope that in the second half, the official say, let's let him play a little bit. He comes Haslam back into the game, and Beasley will go out. Beasley hasn't been much of a factor here tonight. Four points, two rebounds in 17 minutes. You know, let's face it, Mike. Officials can call fouls every single time down the floor. Without question. So Should they choose? Yeah. If they choose, but you, you hope that they would find some consistency, much like the teams are trying to find. Two minutes. Here's Richardson got a hand in there, knocked it away. Here comes Arroyo, slows it down as the Celtics get back. Now hits, misses rather, the pull-up. Loose ball. Rondo's going to get to it first, and he gets fouled by Haslam. John looking for a little help and gets it from two of his teammates. Well, this is just great hustle play by the Celtics. A little communication. Paul Pierce stopping, but great job by Rondo selling it. Yeah, he did. One part of his game we don't talk about a lot, his, his acting skills have gotten much better. You, you have to in this league. I mean, you, you can get fouled, but if you don't sell it the right way, it's not going to get called. Three for three now at the line. Tonight's game updates are brought to you by Amica Insurance. It's not just how you're covered, it's how you're treated. You know, it's hard when you're on a team with Paul Pierce and Ray Allen and Kevin Garnett and Rasheed Wallace. Guys like Glenn Davis, it's hard to be a strong personality. And I think you and I both agree, there's a lot more to this kid that meets the eye than people have any idea. And, and probably talks less than all those guys. Yeah. He really, to, to, to be as quiet as he is and to have a, a great confidence about him and, and get respect from your teammates says a lot. I like his sense of humor. Yeah. <laughs> this is a near steal by Rondo. O'Neal. Misses the shot. Rashid got the rebound and gets it to Raja. Celts by one and the ball here as we wind down the first half. And that's a push on O'Neal. He picks up his third foul. <laughs> I mean, 
even that play right there. That was there, a lean more than it was a push. It's tough. You know, Perk is already off balance. He's dribbling away from Jermaine O'Neal. And it's to me, that's another tic-tac call. Yes, you can call every single time someone gets touched down the floor, but that's no more than what you see throughout the, you know, the progression of a game. I guess they say it all kind of evens out in the wash. Over a lifetime? <laughs> yeah, it could be that long. <laughs> That's what Tommy's saying yeah. right now. He'd tell you it still hasn't evened out. <laughs> Anthony in and O'Neal out. O'Neal, 13 minutes, six points, no rebound. Well, no assists. Meanwhile, Perkins leading the Celtics in scoring with 13, three rebounds, and two assists. Something tells me, Mike, that all the championships that Tommy's been a part of, mm -hmm. the officials gave them the benefit of the doubt a lot of the time. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> they won despite. Yeah. The <laughs> Picked off again by Ray Allen. That's at least his third steal. Rondo. Oh, nicely oh. done. Don't show him everything, Johnny. <laughs> wow. Celtics go up by five. That's their largest lead of the night. Wade. See that? Uh, you see it coming. Yeah, you can. You can see that coming. Uh, he, he, Here's the Rondo play. This is fantastic defense. Guys stepping up. Ray looking ahead. Throwing it to an open area. Look, I'm going to show it to you. Defense goes by. I'm going to change hands. Beats that guy. Keeps it away from the shot blocker. Just a fantastic move. Kids, you got to learn how to use both hands. So important in the game of basketball. Wade makes his free throw. And, and a lot of times when Dwayne Wade goes to the basket, you see what he's trying to do. He's not necessarily trying to make the basket. He's trying to get the body contact. And if nothing else, get a foul and get himself to the free throw line. I think at times making the basket is secondary for him in those situations. 22 and a half for Wade. But the Celtics have a three-point lead in the ball as we're in the final minute. Rondo takes it to Arroyo. Look at Park again. And he'll have a chance for a three-point play. Why late they rotations. Keep, it's late. It's, it's, <laughs> the rotations, it, they've been doing this all game. The Celtics can do this all game. Great job. Two guys step up. Where's the third guy? It's been late all night for the Miami Heat. The Celtics just have to continue to take advantage of that. So Perk with a 16 point half gets one more at the line. Perk will probably eat that stuff again, whatever it was. <laughs> Stay tuned for our McDonald's Halftime Report. Gary and Tommy are standing by. They'll have a breakdown of tonight's first half. Carolyn Mano will be by with a Sportsnet Central update. That's all coming up at halftime. There goes Wade again to the basket. And he'll get to the free throw line again for the 38th and 39th time in this half. And I, it seems that way. I guess the, the silver lining is it slows the pace of the game down a, a little bit. So you, know, you get some rest for Pierce and... and Rondo and Perk and your, you know your studs, but again, there's no continuity. And now all of a sudden, every time Dwayne Wade touches that ball in the paint, there's a whistle being blown. As the ninth free throw attempt for Wade, he's made five of them. Celtics are going to use a 20-second timeout here. They will have 25 seconds on the clock. 57-51, they lead by six. Wade will have one more free throw. One of his favorite bigs, Kendrick Perkins, hooking up four times in this half. And, and Perk knows, if I just move to an open spot, step up, Rondo will find me. And again, those late rotations hurting the heat, but the Celtics really taking advantage. I'm sure Doc will tell his guys at halftime, listen, they're going to step up and help. You continue to be in Rondo's vision. He will find you. Seven assists for Rondo so far in the game. For the beneficiary of four of those, as you just saw, 17 points overall. 
Understand, too, folks, we're, we're not saying the Celtics are necessarily getting hosed here. We're just no. saying that the officials have decided that they're going to use their whistles tonight. Yeah. We've had 12 personal fouls called in the last four minutes. So it's it, right. It's not us sitting here complaining about whistles being blown. And, and I don't care if it's blown both ways. Just the continuity of the game. It's jammed up. It's slowed down. It's, it's a pace that neither one of these teams want to play at, stopping every other time up and down the floor. Anthony, a nice job there going in and getting that miss by Wade, who's now 5 of 10 at the line. Wade comes to the ball, and he'll try to get the final shot here. Shot clock and game clock just about in sync. Wade decides to jack up a three and make it. But he gives the Celtics plenty of time to get a shot off. Here comes Rondo. Leans looking for a foul. He's not going to get it, and that's going to be the half. And Boston's going to take a three-point lead to the locker room. 17 first-half points for that man right there, Kendrick Perkins. He's got three rebounds and two assists. Celtics lead at 57-54 at the break. Let's go back to the studios and Gary. All right, Mike, thanks. First half replay brought to you by AAA, your license to save. To join AAA, just go to AAA.com. 57-54, Celtics have got themselves a three-point halftime lead. I'm here with Johnny Marshall. Your thoughts on that first half? Well, I think if you're Doc Rivers and you see your team shoot 60% and the other team shoots 50, you're not so good with that. You don't want the, the Heat and Dwayne Wade shooting 50%. I think he would rather his team be around 50 and the other team to be 40. Yeah. You got to yeah. stop the ball if you're Dwayne Wade. You got to do what, what teams do to him. Box him in, get help from every direction, let him know you're there, and stop turning the ball over. Let's take a look at the top three scoring leaders. They're brought to you by Comcast Triple Play. Kendrick Perkins up on top of the list, 17 points. Nine for Rondo, nine for Ray Allen, 25 for Dwayne Wade. The lead all scorers, O'Neal and Wright with six apiece. Let's check in with our Simmons sideline guy. As you can imagine, coaches said offense wasn't the problem. It was the defense, especially in the first quarter against Dwayne Wade. What they want to do in the second quarter, make him play in a crowd, make him more of a playmaker in the second half of the ball game. The thing that really disturbed the, uh, the coaches with Dwayne Wade are the second chance opportunities and the fact that he got to the free throw line 10 times in that first half. The coaches did like how Rajon Rondo and Paul Pierce moved despite the fact that they are less than 100%, guys. Yeah, Celtics didn't do themselves any favors, Donnie, with those 11 turnovers either. You know, and again, what happens is you give the, the Miami Heat and Dwayne Wade extra opportunities, just like any team in the league. They're going to make you feel it. Ten second chance points for the Heat. Ray Allen comes the other way after Pierce said no. Pierce was trying to post up a little bit. Celtics it down to six on the shot clock. Fifty-nine, fifty-four. Celtics open it up by five. Nineteen now in the game for Perkins. O'Neal can't get much back, and an illegal defense is called against Boston. I think it might have been Pierce. Beasley is going to shoot the tee. Richardson will inbound. Five-point game. Pierce, nice job denying Arroyo the ball. Gives it up without much of a fight. Arroyo comes up short. Pierce has got the rebound. A pretty good D there. Perk staying in front of O'Neal, making him eat up time off that clock and forcing Arroyo, who really, he doesn't look right with that jump shot. That's the guy you want to have to beat you. Pierce goes by Richardson. Can't finish it. Rebound taken by O'Neal. And Wade comes the other way. Pierce just one for three in the game, but he's five for six at the line. O'Neal for two. Something to say to Rashid Wallace on the way by. 
And I'm sure it was something friendly because Rashid didn't say anything back. Yeah. <laughs> of course, they played together in Portland. Portland. Here's airmails the three. Beasley has it knocked away from behind. Picked off Celtics here with numbers on the break. Trying to get it into Rashid, and he can't handle it. That's yeah, a tough pass for a big guy, especially like Rashid. And you don't really see him bending down that much. He's not like KG. KG, you know, understands where Rondo's going to throw it, but this is a nice little poke away here. Rashid, those long arms. You got to keep that elbow tucked if you're Beasley trying to turn that corner. Ray Allen pretty unhappy with that call. Ray Allen, third, team's first. Third on Ray. Six on the shot clock. And they got Perkins with the foul. Now it's on Ray Allen again. Jock unhappy. Let's see. And I think Ray was trying to draw the illegal screen there. Ray on the bench now with four. He's got nine points. Tony Allen in the game. O'Neal with six on the shot clock. Gives it up to Wade. Wade, difficult shot. Rebound Wallace. Outlet pass Rondo. Pierce running the floor. They get it to him. Blocking foul and a chance for a three-point play for Pierce. And that gets the Miami bench up. And we'll take the call. You just never know what that call is going to be. Great job. Outlet here from Rashid. Good rebound. Rondo, two dribbles. Bullet pass to Pierce. And... Richardson might have slid in a little late. He might not have. <laughs> so you just have to, you have to go with what the officials calls, but Paul Pierce gets himself to that free throw line for an and one. Ten points in the game now for Pierce. Half of them at the line. Celtics by four. Five. Vladimir Shulman doing his work on the neck of Glenn Davis. Wade now with 27. Dwayne Wade shoots about 60% in the paint. And that would advise you to try to keep him out of there, and I know it's easier said than done. 16 field goal attempts already for Wade in the game. Inside to Perkins, he gets pushed by O'Neal. They don't call that. Wade just comes up shooting. It's a great contest by T.A. Good read. Contest late. Perkins, bullet pass underneath. Tony couldn't handle it cleanly, but managed to keep control. Celtics still have 11 on the shot clock. T.A. no, gets it back, and he got fouled. Well, good job, T.A., keeping the pressure on. You don't let the defense get set up. We probably could have called a couple fouls here, but we <laughs> will take one at this rate. And T.A. staying with it. That was almost like a trick shot in horse. Throw it off of one side and go back and get it on the other. Beasley picks up his third foul. Tony with his first free throw attempt of the evening. Celtics are 19 of 24 at the line. Eric Spolster's team 10 of 17. Seven points in the game for Tony Allen as Ray watches on the bench with four fouls. Good call. Uh, that's that's exactly what they were calling in that first half, a legal screen on Beasley, and Beasley never got out there to get square, but this is just an easy call. To me, you'll see Beasley stepping up and just putting that hip in. <laughs> it's a hip check. <laughs> How can you argue that, son? Fourth foul on Beasley. Let's get Haslam back in the game. And 
just led Kirk a little bit too far. And, and that's one of the things we haven't really talked about is the timing. Yes, Paul Pierce's shape, I think, is going to be okay. Doc will monitor that. But his timing with his teammates, remember, he hasn't played for just over two weeks with these guys. Stays with Wade nicely there. Got to stay on the floor. Yeah. And, and he's a guy who you have to contest late only because he has so many great hesitation moves. He'll get you in the air and continue to go to the basket. And this is where you're doing good, stay on the ground. You'll make it a tougher shot for him if you stay on the floor, contest late, and force him into a bad shot. I think that's pretty much what Dr. Sandu is right there. <laughs> I think so. Well, I mean, the, the point is to make him a jump shooter, so now you have him in a jump shooting position. Don't bail him out by letting him jump into you. 29 in the game now for Wade, 7 of 12 at the free throw line, 10 of 17 from the field. Celtics lead is down to 2 at 63-61. Biggest Boston lead, 6. Biggest Miami lead, 6. Pierce on Richardson again. Hey. He just goes by what? Richardson like he's standing still. Yeah, it's unbelievable. <laughs> like Coach Calhoun used to tell us, you couldn't guard a chair. <laughs> That's what it looked like there. Rasheed is whistled for a foul. Richardson getting set up one way and wow. just around him. <laughs> he also used to tell us you couldn't guard your own shadow, and that looked like that would be hard to do. <laughs> that would be hard to not be able. That's how bad. You tell coach that's hard to that's do. That's a that's how bad of a defensive player you are if you can't guard your own shadow. O'Neal misses the shot. Haslam kept the rebound alive, but Wallace tracks it down. Here comes Ronda. He's got Arroyo backing up. And he draws the same type of foul that Tony Allen just made. Well, you got to call it. Yep. If that's what they're going to do, Eric Spolster wanted to travel. But guards, it's amazing how many guards, I think, secretly want to be big men and be shot blockers here. I'm trying to contest, but... Yeah, Rondo, I guess you could say that was a, a, a shooting motion. Rondo four for five at the free throw line tonight, now in double figures with 10 points, eight assists. Spolster, as I mentioned off the top, the youngest coach in the NBA at 39. Job by John at the free throw line tonight, five to six. Tony Allen's got Wade. Rondo's on Arroyo. Wallace on O'Neal. Rebound taken off by Pierce. Sixth rebound of the game for Paul. Richardson gets picked off. Pierce goes by him again. And a traveling violation is called. Perk expecting Pierce to finish that. Shuffling the feet. Yeah, 14 Boston turnovers in the game. That's the number that's going to get Doc's attention. Celtics have only forced eight on the other side. Richardson off the catch. That's what he does so well. Rebound Rashid. Again on the Royal. Kicks it back out to Wallace. They find Tony Allen on the wing. Eight on the shot clock. TA a little lane to the hoop. And Dwayne Wade really didn't play any defense there. They called him for the hold, trying to get over the screen on Rashid. That's the third on Wade. Now this is not Dwayne Wade like defense. He just stays there, doesn't try to fight under. And Rashid had him wrapped up. Yeah. Why a foul? Though? Why not a, just a play on? Mike, these are the questions we've been asking all night. <laughs> these are the times that try men's souls. There it is again, same move. Uh, no 
And it'll be Pierce this time going to the line. Why, Mike? We've been trying to figure that question out. And if, in Tommy's case, probably all season with the officials, but good job here by Paul Pierce. You got to stay on the ground. Paul Pierce, that's his game. Gets you up in the air, and he does it so well. He and Kobe Bryant might be the best in the NBA at really selling that jump shot, and you get in the air, and they come, they jump right into you. We have over six minutes to play in this third quarter, and both teams are in the bonus. Well, these games I don't mind at this pace when you have a guy like Paul who's been out a couple weeks. A guy like Rashid who's going to have to play longer minutes because there are more breaks. I know coaches would say, well, we don't want that because it's choppy. But, you know, if you look at, man, there's some good numbers from Paul Pierce shooting it great from behind three-point range for the month of December. Well, you get him opportunities to be able to continue to shoot like that in January in a game that's kind of stop and go. Yeah, you can say there's no rhythm, it's choppy, but your players are resting on those breaks. It's funny, in a press conference the other day, they were asking Paul whether it should be Eddie House or Ray Allen in the three-point contest. He said, what about me? <laughs> I think I should be in it. 69-61. Six-nothing run here by the Celtics. They have their largest lead of the night, 69-61. Let's check in with our Simmons sidelines guy, Greg Dickerson. Mike, you mentioned Paul Pierce basically saying he should be in the three-point contest of the All-Star game next month. That's all part of Celtics now presented by Arbella Insurance. Thursday night, 8 o'clock, right here on Comcast Sports. And also, Kendrick Perkins shows you a different side as he goes behind the scenes of his favorite Italian restaurant in the North End. And Perk does the cooking now. I know this for a fact. Perk did not, I repeat, did not get food poisoning from his own cooking. Laid up in bed the last couple of days because of food poisoning that he got from movie theater food. Check out Celtics now, presented by Arbella Insurance. It's tomorrow at 8 o'clock. I can't state it enough because I know Perk would be very upset at me and everybody else if he thought his own cooking yeah. caused that food poisoning. Well, that's the first mistake. You don't, you don't go for food in a movie theater. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> Popcorn, perhaps. Popcorn is the limit. Food, no. Maybe, no, no, no. maybe some junior mints. After that, you got to <laughs> shut it down. He has played very well tonight. He looked, uh, looked like a sick kid on the plane yesterday. Just kind of washed out and drawn. Has played exceptionally well with him. One of the things I really like about Perk is like when you, when you know he's playing her to play in City, he never shows it. No, and, and some guys will show it on their face. And, he never shows it. And you know, it, it, guys play their best when they have to focus on basketball and really not be concerned with their health. Chalmers knocks down a three, makes it a five point game at 69 64. Give the assist to Wade. That's his fourth of the night. Tony Allen goes right by Wade. Great and move, got a chance for a three-point play. Terrific, terrific move. This is just, this is a big-time move by Tony Allen. It shows you something that he really doesn't show you a lot, that patience with the basketball. At times, he gets ahead of himself. This is just a good move. Get him in that mid-post area. Head fake. You know guys are going to go for it. Up and under, great job by T.A. Chalmers the other way in a seven-point game, 71-64. Chalmers again, kicks it out this time to Wade. Wade inside, Haslam for two. Heads up play by Haslam, good catch there. Yeah. And, and Dwayne Wade's a tough guy to play with because you know he shoots the ball so much, but at times when the defense is there and he has to make a bailout pass, you better be ready to catch it or he's going to let you know about it. Hudson. Pierce, no. Rebound O'Neal. Heat looking to get to three or less here as we're under five minutes to play in the third. O'Neal kicks it out. Richardson off the bounce this time, just lost it, but O'Neal makes him look good. Chalmers up harassing Rondo. Rondo kicks it, wide open look for Rashid. No. Rebound taken by Chalmers. Celtics back defensively.
Wade drives a tough shot. Yeah, pretty good defense. That's all you can ask if you're Doc Rivers. 31 for Wade on 11 of 18 shooting. We're winding down this third quarter. It's back to a one-point game. Miami, it's a one-point game. Celtics up 71-70, 4.04 to go. Third quarter, looking to host the party this winter, or just a fun night out with friends and family. Celtic Sweet Nights are on sale now for each Celtic home game, available to groups of up to 20 people. It includes great seats in your own private suite, a welcome for your group on the Jumbotron and special catering options as well. To inquire about available suites, call 866-GO-CELTICS or visit Celtics.com. It's all courtesy of Models. Marquise Daniels made the trip here to Miami with the Celtics, had a cast removed from his fractured left thumb yesterday had a new cast put on no timetable set yet for his return but Marquis still is hopeful to return somewhere around the all-star break he looks to have a soft cast put on when he gets reevaluated in two to three weeks Marquis's original timetable six to eight weeks when he had the surgery back on December 9th guys Miami on a 9-2 run and that has awakened the crowd 71-70 one point game. Lost him the ball in the lead. Trying to get it into the hands of Pierce. Tracked down by Perkins inside to Rashid. Size advantage on Haslam. Backs him down, takes him across, and gets an easy two. Uh, you would think all night long, <laughs> Mike. There's no reason you can't at least give him a touchdown there and just see what happens. You know, see if he can go to work. If not, he's going to make the right play and find someone. Wade looking for contact he didn't get, and then Rashid tipped it in. And at this point, I think the officials understand Wade is just looking for contact. And the Celtics turn it over. And that's a play that just cannot happen. You can live with, okay, good defense, guys get away. Rashid tips it in. But the following play you just can't have, a hustle play by Chalmers. They get the ball back and a chance to get the lead. Chalmers, who made the play, takes the shot. Rashid the rebound. Here comes Rondo. Boston by one, 73-72. Rashid. It's a quick shot for my taste, especially when the momentum has shifted. Mm -hmm. You want to see that ball work a little bit, use some clock. In the hands of Wade. Gives it up to Haslam. Knocks it down. Wade starting to pile up the assists now. Six to go with the 31 points. Haslam and Wallace chatting with each other. So Wade was also in that discussion. Rondo explodes along the baseline. And a foul on Rashid setting a screen down there. I think so. I think a, a moving screen, but Rashid is, this is when he has to understand the focus is trying to win this game for his team. And, and really, you know, there's Haslam saying, okay, I'm just going to play basketball. You keep talking. And right now, Rashid needs to understand, and I'm sure he does, his team needs him on the floor. You know, Joe Crawford is one of the toughest officials in the NBA. You look at him wrong, he will tee you up. Can't afford that right now. Rashid, the third Celtic with four fouls in this game. Glenn Davis just came in covering O'Neal. O'Neal takes him across the lane and hits the shot. That's a good shot. Pretty good defense. Jermaine O'Neal using his height advantage over Glenn Davis. Nice run by the Heat here after being down eight. They're up three. Rondo. He was fouled. Looks like Quentin Richardson pushed him. They're going out of bounds. Let's take a look at it. Rondo does a good job turning the corner. And they call that little push there. On Richardson. So Rondo back to the free throw line. This will be the 31st and 32nd free throws for the Celtics in this game. And we get two minutes to go in the third quarter. And I know the two schools of thought are, hey, we're getting to the line. We shouldn't be complaining about fouls going either way, but 
The other part is it's a lot of free throws to shoot in a basketball game, especially at this level. Again, it's about the continuity, no consistency, no flow for teams. You have to do your best to play through that. Rondo 7 of 8 at the line as you look at the team free throws. Boston trailing by one. Pierce has got Richardson. Perkins on O'Neal. O'Neal, nowhere to go. Tries again. Has to kick it out. Richardson misses the three. That's going to be off Wade out of bounds. Celtic ball. And you can feel that the Heat are playing with a lot of confidence right now. Jermaine O'Neal making the extra pass. Guys spacing the floor. Kendrick Perkins, the points leader on our Amica game update. Haslam's got Davis. Again, we've seen a couple passes from Pierce. The timing is off just a little bit. Pass might be a little too high, maybe a little too low. Anthony into the game. Richardson out, O'Neal out. Wright is also in the game. Heat the ball in a one-point lead. Approaching the final minute here in the third. Rondo off the Wade miss. Crosses over into the paint, lays it down, and offensive foul. And if I'm Rondo, I'm looking when guys step up, yes, make the pass under control, but I'm looking to try to score. You're in a good position right here. If you're going to run into Haslam, you know, throw that little floater up. Avoid the contact. Third foul on Rondo. Perkins, good job jumping out on Haslam. Pierce is in the passing lane. Gets it ahead to Tony Allen, and that gets picked off. And Wade gets two. Three-point Miami lead at 78-75, 33 for Wade as we wind down the third quarter. Rondo trying to force it into Davis. Another turnover. And Miami will look for, I would think, the final shot here as the shot clock and game clock are separated by about a second. Tony Allen will have his hands full with Wade. Get a good stop here. Step up. Help T.A. Haslam. Rebound taken down by Perkins. With time, Perkins got to shoot it. Let's it go. No. You can't take those shots when you're leading the league in field goal percentage. No, well, Doc is happy to get out of that quarter. I can guarantee you that, Mike Gorman. He finished with a 17-6 run after the Celtics had gone up eight, and Miami leads by three. 78-75, 12 minutes of basketball left here in South Florida. There's no movement on offense at all. We're not moving without the ball. We're not moving the basketball around. We're not setting picks. Ray Allen telling his guys, all we did in that third quarter was turn over the basketball. We've got to get to the second pick and roll. That's where we're getting good shots, guys. Not far from the truth from Ray. 20 turnovers for the Celtics. Stats through three are brought to you by Ace Tickets. Call 1-800-MY-SEATS. Is that turnover number at the end. Boston finally has Miami below 50% shooting at a break. Haslam. I think they got the foul on Davis. No, they don't. They got the foul on is on Sheldon Williams. And just when you start to feel things aren't going your way, you look up, it's the fourth quarter. You have to understand it's a grind. And I saw a quote that Dwayne Wade had in the paper the other day saying, you know, you have to be consistent. You have to play through the tough times. That's what the Celtics have to do right now. Let's take a quick look at tonight's legal seafood trivia question. If it isn't fresh, it isn't legal. Both Dwayne Wade and Doc Rivers have scored over 9,000 career NBA points. What Marquette player has the most career NBA points? We'll have that answer for you in a little bit. You gotta think on that one. 
Ray Allen, who has been out for a while with those four fouls, has only played 21 minutes so far. Scal on the floor. Beasley's got him. Anthony's out on Williams. Wright is chasing Ray Allen. Now Haslam picks him up. Glenn Davis, tough angle, has it blocked out of bounds. Pretty Three good, seconds for the Celtics. Pretty good defense by the Heat. The rotation's much better. They made that adjustment at halftime. That third guy has started rotating down, and the Celtics need to continue to move the ball with the pass and not so much the dribble. Ray Allen and Wright were doing some bumping. That's what the official is up talking to them about. Three seconds to get a shot off. Tipped out of bounds. Clock moved to two. And it's, you know, the, the difference with the shot clock is that it's in full seconds. You know, there's no right. tenths on there. So that couldn't have been a full second. I think that's what... You know, they put 11.21 on the game clock, but still two seconds on the shot clock. Davis got to shoot it. Didn't get it off. And, and right now, the Celtics, you know, and, and Ray did right. He said, everything's calm. Just be calm. We're down five. Play defense. Run our stuff at the other end. Can't panic in this situation. It's Anthony Haslam, Beasley, Chalmers, and Wright. So the Celtics... Don't have to deal with Wade here for at least a couple of minutes. Right, no. Rebound to Scalabrini, gets it in the hands of Rondo. And gets away with a push in the back as well. Rondo gets it right back. Fresh dribble. Beats his man to the basket. Lays it up and in. Just what you need. Don't come down shooting jump shots. Put the ball in Rondo's hand and, and let him get himself into that paint area. They don't come to help you lay the ball up. 15 and 8, the numbers for Rondo now. Chalmers, a deep three, and he made it. Uh, too wide open. Too much space for Chalmers. It's a big shot. Heat 50% from deep. Rondo turns the corner. Skips it to Sheldon Williams, about a 14-footer, does not go. Davis battles for the rebound, but Wright comes out of there with it. Miami doing this with Wade on the bench, up to a six-point lead. Chalmers finds Haslam, that's his spot, he buries it. He's solid, Mike, you and I both know. And that's a much-needed timeout for the Celtics. Got to get yourself regrouped. Plenty of time to go in this game. 9.48 left in the game. They are psyched on the Miami sideline. 85-77, they got the lead. Their biggest lead of the night, 85-77, 9.48 to go in the game. Fans, it's that time of year again. Your chance to select this year's 2010 NBA All-Stars presented by T-Mobile. Now, be sure to vote for your favorite Celtic player online at Celtics.com or text your favorite player's last name to 69622. We've got to get that guy on the All-Star team. Right. You can even win a trip to Dallas for this year's NBA All-Star game in the NBA 2K10 sweepstakes. Log on to Celtics. Dot com or text in to cast your vote right now. Let's check in with Greg. Mike, at 6 p.m. tonight, all contracts around the NBA became guaranteed. Unfortunately, Lester Hudson, well, he was at risk because of that. Hudson, 16 games, 4.4 minutes, had highs of six points and three assists. November 3rd against Philadelphia, he was waived by the Celtics. The roster now stands at one at 14. It's one under the league limit, so there is some roster flexibility for the Celtics. Let's go, Heat! the other way off the missed dunk attempt by Rasheed. Beasley trying to assert himself, and good block by Davis coming to help out. Pretty good defense by Scal there, too. Rondo. Davis looking to work on Beasley. Wright comes to help out. Davis goes by him and draws the foul. I love the concerted effort to get the ball into the paint. Have patience. Guys, space out. You let yourself go to work here. Good job by Scal reaching in, 
Might have got away with one there, let him play, but help comes from Glenn Davis. And then offensively reward him. He's got a block shot up the other end. Beasley comes down with that shot blocking hand. Glenn Davis going to the free throw line. Fifth foul on Beasley, who will stay on the court. Here's the answer to tonight's legal seafood trivia question. Both Dwayne Wade and Doc Rivers have scored over 9,000 career NBA points. What Marquette player has the most career NBA points? Any guesses? I, I'm stumped. Maurice Lucas. Wow. Nearly 15,000 for Maurice. I know he's fighting some illness right now, and we wish him well. Anthony. Solid player. Yep. The, the thing about this Miami Heat team is guys understand what their roles are. You don't see guys doing things that they're not normally used to doing. They're keeping it simple, and that's what you have to do when you play with a guy like D. Wade. Rasheed unable to get that one down. Beasley up strong for the rebound. And the Heat are looking for a double-digit lead here. You got to get get there, get that well dry, Mike. Don't start shooting jump shots. Continue to get that ball inside. Chalmers here with eight on the shot clock. Chalmers going to take it. Nothing doing there, and Scal just lets it go out of bounds. Into the game, Kendrick Perkins. Scal is out. Celtics back to their starting five here with 7.58 to play in the game. And Spolster say, saying, you know what, I'm going to give my guy D. Wade some rest as Serious much as rest. I can. <laughs> Serious rest. We have a nice lead here. I you feel yeah. the Celtics start coming back, then I'll put him in. He hasn't played in the fourth quarter, so he's... Well, there he is. He hurt us. Yeah. Should have kept my mouth shut. He should have, really. <laughs> Wade with his 33 points back on the floor. Well, this Miami Heat team practices extremism. They're either up big in games early yes. and blow the lead, or they're down big. Chalmers picks off the pass. 22 Boston turnovers. Haslam again. That baseline shot is called Haslam Bill. Yeah. <laughs> has made that his town and knows that that's his sweet spot. Haslam's got 15 off the bench. 28 to 9, the Miami run. They lead it 89-78. Full with 7.34 left to go in the game, 89-78. They're down 11. Tonight's game summary brought to you by Nissan and your Nissan dealers. Rondo and Pierce back in the lineup with 15 points apiece. Big night for Dwayne Wade with a lot of time left to play. Turnovers really have hurt the Celtics, 22 to 9. It is Rondo, Wallace, Pierce, Perkins, and Rayal. Pierce takes it all the way to the bucket for two. And that offense will work for you if you keep the Heat on their heels. Don't give them an easy way out by shooting jump shots. The issue is, down at this end of the floor, Mike, you have to get stops, especially with Dwayne Wade back in the game now. He'd work it to Wade. He takes a three, back rims it. Anthony might have got away with a little shove on Perkins. Came up with the offensive board. Wade unable to convert. Allen gets it out. Rondo able to get a hand on it. Pierce faked the three. Wallace takes the three and knocks it down. A big shot. Good, sure is. good look by Paul Pierce. You know, you're looking at the numbers. The Celtics have taken 50 field goal attempts to 72 by the Heat. And that just tells you there's a lot of turnover. Celtics turned that ball over 21 times. Got to take care of it down the stretch. You got to win the game on this end of the Absolutely. floor. Absolutely. Wade with four on the shot clock. Short stays with it. And got fouled. And does that so well. Knows guys are coming. Misses it, goes back and gets his own ball. And, and really, you got to step up. Rashid doesn't do a good job. He reaches. You can't do that. You got to be there for Ray. And here, Perk 
Can't get it the first time. Dwayne Wade stays with it, gets himself to the free throw line. That was the 10th offensive rebound of the night for the Heat. Paul Pierce with 17 on his return, but Jermaine O'Neal is back in for Anthony. Thirty-five point nine for Wade. Ninety-one eighty-three. Ray Allen trying to take it to the basket. Is that a shot, or is he trying to dump that off the court? Jermaine O'Neal with the foul. That's his fifth. Well, the defense has been very good for the Miami Heat, and Ray looked like he was trying to pass it, got hit. He will be shooting too, which is the guy you want at the free throw line, but again, doing a good job of getting into that paint. Been there twice tonight, made a boat. A lot of time left in this game. Mm -hmm. What's the key as you watch Ray to why he's such a good free throw shooter? Well, everything is pretty fundamentally sound and, and the repetition. And I can, I was a witness, I can attest to the fact that Ray would shoot two, three, four hundred free throws every time you go into the gym because I was right there with him doing the same thing while we were in college and he still does that. It's the repetition. You got to be in the gym. Good block by Wallace there as O'Neal tried to take it hard to the hoop. A good job recovering. Jermaine O'Neal, too many moving parts to get that ball up to the basket. Gave Rashid a, a chance to slap it out of his hand. Seven seconds on the shot clock for the Heat. They get it into Wade's hands. Takes a fall away. No. O'Neal there, knocked away, picked off the ground by Wright. He got pushed. No call. And now back into Wade's hands with 14 on the shot clock. Chalmers for three. O'Neal an offensive board. Foul on Rashid. Wow. And I know it's tough for officials to watch everything, and, and they're letting them play a little bit here. But in that case, Rashid, you got to just put a body on him. When you do your work early by boxing out with your body, you don't have to shove. You don't have to throw guys out of the way. And there you see them grappling a little bit. Probably could have let that go. I would think. But it's Rashid, and you know the reputation he has in this league with officials. Fifth foul. O'Neal. Rejected by Perkins. Out of bounds, Boston ball. 439 to go in the game. Celtics down six. Talk about opportunities. This is pretty good defense here by Perk. Again, letting them play down there. Good timing. Jermaine O'Neal exposes that ball with the left and Perk goes and gets it but Celtics really dodged a couple of bullets there by giving the Miami Heat extra opportunities to score. Charmin's up trying to stay with Rondo who just kind of runs by him. Celtics getting Pierce's hands. Richardson defending there. Perkins the screen. Ray Allen a deep three and he knocks it down. And a quick timeout is taken by Miami, and suddenly this is a one-possession game with 4.23 left to play. All five of the Celtics starters in double figures, 91-88.
Celtics have Wallace, Perkins, Ray Allen, Rondo, and Pierce. Chalmers gives it up. Haslam, same spot, same result. Boy, he really understands to find his spot on the floor. It's just you wish the Celtics would, would understand that that's where he's the best at on that left baseline. 17 off the bench for Haslam. We understand we've had some audio problems. We apologize. I think we're caught up. Rashid with a loud two makes it a three-point game again. And Mike, I know I've been harping on getting the ball in the paint. They did make a couple three-pointers, Ray and Rashid. But you said it, the game has to be won at this end of the floor, and you can't give opportunities back to the Heat. Wade misses, rebound tapped around, but into Chalmers' hand, and then right back into Wade's hands, who is talking to himself, upset over that miss. Let's see if he tries it again. Rondo gambled and lost. You know, there was a piece, Donnie, again, in some of the homework that we do. Here's another look at this play here, Rondo gambling, and, and in that Wade doesn't seem to be having fun yeah. while playing this game. And the look on his face on those last two <laughs> plays was not the look of a guy who was having a good time here. Well, listen, he has to do a lot. I mean, he has to do everything for this team, and, and say what you want about Shaq when he was here that Dwayne Wade was the reason he won the championship. It was easier for Dwayne Wade when he had a guy like that to play with. And he feels that strain. And fortunately for this city and this organization, this guy's healthy. Tipped around, pulled down by Perkins. And Wade complaining to Joe Crawford for a call he didn't get. And he's gotten every call <laughs> just say. pretty much that he's wanted tonight. Got in the line 14 times. <laughs> Pierce. Rashid again got it. But what's important, Mike, is that he stayed on the floor. He kept his composure when the officials had warned him. Calm down. Sets an illegal screen, gets a call against him. He stays on the floor. Richardson looks to answer. No rebound control by Rondo underneath. Celtics looking to retake the lead here with two and a half to go after being down 11. Pierce thought about a three. Chalmers defending him, and Chalmers got all ball, apparently. Nine on the shot clock. Pierce, a little step away. Rebound off the court to Rashid. The fresh 24 for the Celtics, and they get it to Rondo. And Doc calls the play off the bench. I like how Rondo immediately runs to the ball. That, that's a sign of a great point guard. Go get the basketball. 15-4 Boston run. Rondo throws up off the glass for two. And a timeout's taken by Miami. Boston has reassumed the lead at 95-93. 17 points on the night for Rondo. The Celtics, all five starters between 14 and 19. Celtics making a nice run here after being down 11 to take the lead of two, 95-93, with 2-0-3. Left to go in the game. Here's a look at some of the highlights in that comeback. Well, how do you get back in this game late in the game? You give it to Paul Pierce, knowing he can get to the rim. Rasheed Wallace stepping back. He had it going, kept his composure. The defense, like you said, Mike, was the key. Rasheed Wallace, again, composure to stay on the floor, knowing his team needs him. And you know what? Give it to your point guard. Speed racer, Rajon Rondo and go try to win this game. This is a great comeback for this Celtics team, but it, it, to me, Mike, you can talk about defense, you can talk about offense. It's the composure that they've kept being down, staying on the floor, calls not going their way. That, to me, is what's made this a game for the Green. Celtics have held Miami to 5 of 20 shooting in the fourth quarter. We'll go on to two minutes on this possession. Chalmers looking for finding Wade. Leaves it for O'Neal. Misses the shot. Rebound controlled by Wallace. And it's different making shots early in the game when the score is five to four or, or ten to eight than it is late in the game when you, your team needs a bucket. Zellick's trying to make it a two possession game here. Offensive foul, blocking foul. Oh! That is a good call. Paul Pierce stepping through. There was contact. And Quentin Richardson 
Could have been a no call, if you ask me, but Paul Pierce stepping through, going into his move. Q catches an elbow in the arm. Again, Mike, which way do you go? You just have no idea. I think Spolster was hoping, hey, we're at home. We get that call. He's upset. He doesn't like it. Celtic ball side out, 14 seconds on the shot clock. We get a technical foul. Richardson. Yeah, on Quentin Richardson. Nice call. That was really not a good time if you're a Miami Heat fan to get a technical foul. The damage is done. It, okay, you know that they're calling it a, a, a block. They're not going to change the call. This is where you're a veteran if you're Quentin Richardson. You understand you need this win. This is a good win for your team here at home. Play through it. Tonight's You Make the Call, presented by Verizon Wireless, America's largest 3G network. Offensive foul or defensive foul? Defensive foul was the call. 14 on the shot clock for the Celtics. A minute 35 to go in the game. Boston by three and the ball. They get it into Perkins. Now in Rondo's hands. Rondo with six on the clock. Takes it to the basket. No. Rebound Haslam. Chalmers in a hurry. Chalmers to the basket. Rejected by Pierce. Picked off by Rashid. Knocked away to O'Neal. Wade for three. No. Haslam in a battle underneath. And Rashid is going to be called for the foul. Oh, that's a tough. And that'll be six on Rashid. Tough call. And they're fighting for the ball. We got two guys grappling, fighting for the basketball. That's tough. That's real tough. And the Celtics Rashid does stir the emotional <laughs> part, really doesn't he? Does. <laughs> he really does. And the Celtics bench doing a really good job of staying in front of him. You know, T.A. had his hands up, so the officials couldn't see him. Scal talking to him. Haslam will be at the free throw line. He's three for four there tonight. Has 17 points off the bench. And he's right on average. A little better right now. Rashid fouls out with 16 points, nine rebounds. Oh, he did his job. You can't ask for much more from Rashid. 16 and nine, you said he stirred the emotional pot. One point game, 96-95. Boston will take it under a minute on this possession. Get the ball to the rim. Put the pressure on the officials to blow their whistle. Into Pierce's hands. Richardson defending. Ray is going to take a three. Knocks it down. Timeout, Miami. <laughs> well, you talk about what makes him a great shooter. He's been in this position <laughs> yeah. before. That's what your veterans give you. That's why this team plays so well on the road. Their veterans stepping up. Paul Pierce. First game back in two weeks, making the right decision, finding Ray Allen off a great screen, knocking down the three. Celtics going up four. Onions is, I think, what Bill Raftery <laughs> would say right about that. <laughs> Absolutely. But we see Paul making the pass. We see Ray making the shot. But Kendrick Perkins got Ray Allen open. Ray should be thanking Perk for that screen. Celtics are four for four from three-point land in this fourth quarter. And have now made it a two possession game, 99 95, with 53 seconds to play. Again, this is a game Boston was down 11 with about seven minutes to go. The road ahead is presented by a Seller Express where you can plug in and work or just sit back and relax. Visit Amtrak.com for fares and schedules. A Seller, enjoy the journey. Celtics leaving here tomorrow. We head for Atlanta Friday night. Hope you can join us, 8 o'clock. Celtics and the Atlanta Hawks. 
And then again, travel on Saturday to Toronto for a one o'clock game against the Raptors, who'll be looking for some payback. And then the Hawks again for the second time in three days on Monday night at the TD Garden. Busy week for the Celtics, then down to New Jersey and back home to Chicago. Ray Allen, nine points in this quarter, 18 on the evening. Three for four from deep. Well, the one thing I see from Paul Pierce back in this game is the Celtics' toughness, mentally more than anything. I really think Paul Pierce stepping on the floor, you get a sense that his team feels, okay, we got we have our one of our emotional leaders back in Paul Pierce. Whether he scores or not, we have a confidence, and you can feel him bringing it to this floor. Ray Allen catches up with Wade. You would think he's going to be the guy here. O'Neal comes and sets the screen, gives it up to Chalmers. Chalmers. O'Neal to take it, knocks it down. Good ball movement by the Heat. Nice knockdown. Celtics get the ball in, be ready to make free throws. Heat don't need to foul here. Pierce saying, go ahead, I'll bring it up. Biggest possession of the game right here. Pierce with five on the shot clock. Pierce. The flip shot, no, taken down by Haslam, quickly to Wade. Wade in a hurry. Ray Allen call for the foul. And that's a good foul by Ray. Make Dwayne Wade earn it at the free throw line. You leave time on the clock to get another shot up. I'll take this foul from Ray. You're backpedaling. You make sure he doesn't get that ball up to the rim. Put the pressure on Dwayne Wade to make two free throws. Hasn't shot it well tonight from yep. that free throw line. 9 of 14 for Wade at the line tonight. Two huge ones right here. His club trailing 99-97. This one for the tie. Celtics with timeouts remaining. Boston will have 5.5 seconds to win it. Well, you did what you could do if you're Ray Allen. You put the ball in Dwayne Wade's hand at the free throw line. He hasn't shot it well tonight. He makes them both, but you give your team a chance to go down and get a quality shot with five and a half seconds to go in this game. Now, the Celtic strategy appears just eating the whole clock and then trying to get a basket. Well, I think when you see Quentin Richardson in front of you and he really has had his way with Q, especially the poor defensive player he is, you know, Doc Rivers, I'm sure, would say, hey, put it in Paul's hands, let him go to work. I have no issue with that. Coming up next, Post Game Live, presented by New England Ford, Gary, Tommy, Greg, Donnie, and I will all be by Doc's Post Game Press Conference. Player interviews, Tommy Awards, all coming up on Post Game Live, presented by New England Ford. This is where... Jeff Van Gundy, I know for one on national TV, has said that Doc Rivers is the best coach in the league at drawing up plays for the moment, like right now. Yeah, and he, we see it out of timeouts. We see it out of bounds under on the side. Now it's up to his players to run the play that he calls. And obviously Miami Heat, they're going to have some defense ready, a lot of probably help defense, and, and they're going to want the Celtics to beat them over the top. It will be Davis, Pierce, Rondo, Allen, and Perkins. Perk will make the inbounds pass. 5.5 seconds on the clock. We're tied at 99. O'Neal, who had originally turned his back, now comes up to defend the inbounds pass. Into Ray Allen. Wade with the steal for the game. Six tenths of a second on the clock. Ray has 
has to know they are not going to call a foul on that right. that far from the basket. You have to be strong with that basketball. The first thing you do is catch it. You don't immediately put that ball on the floor. Dwayne Wade is one of the best defensive players in the NBA. Can't put yourself in that situation. Grab the ball, secure it. You don't get a shot, so what? You go into overtime. Six tenths of a second for a catch and shoot now for the Celtics. Down by two. Now do you, do you try an alley-oop here? You try to run either a back screen for an alley-oop, but at this point you have no players in the game if you're the Celtics that can go catch an alley-oop. You got Glenn Davis. You got your jump shooters right now in the game. Yeah, Scal's in there. Davis, Rondo, Allen, and Pierce. And, and the key here is the pass. Without question. Pierce looking to Rondo. Tie game! Doc at his best. Wow! The doctor, Glenn Rivers, <laughs> drew up a play. Play of the new century for the <laughs> Celtics. What a great pass. You give it to Rondo. And I'm sorry, I said you don't have a guy who can catch an alley-oop. <laughs> I meant for a dunk. But what a great pass. Not good defense on the ball. Quentin Richardson hands down. He sets it up for it to be a successful play for the Celtics. Paul Pierce makes a chess pass. Uh, gets it pass. off. Terrific pass. Great play all around. On both ends, we're going to overtime. Tied at 101. We are back and about to start overtime. 101 apiece on a brilliant pass from Paul Pierce out of bounds to Rajon Rondo to tie the game. And, Take and, a look. If, and if you're Coach Bolstra, why not put a seven footer on the ball? You have a 6'5 guy with his hands to his side. Paul makes a chess pass. Great call. And Great call. Rondo, soft hands, finishes. And I'm sure the Miami Heat bench are thinking they're going to get a, a shot up. They're going to jack up a, a bad shot. There's a small lineup in. They never thought they could throw it over the top, but that's when you put, and we've seen Doc do that. You put a seven foot or even two seven footers on the ball, so they can't make that pass over the top. Well, exactly right, and it was a great point because I didn't see it the first couple of times around. Richardson had his hands shoulder height. Yeah, I, I mean, his, his arms were to his side. Yeah. It, your coaches tell you never let a guy make a chest pass from out of bounds. What a great play. I'm already claiming that the, the play of the century for the Celtics. The new, I'm sorry, the decade, the new decade. The new decade. There you go. <laughs> century, I, mean, I wasn't sure. <laughs> no, that's tough. New decade, I'm with you. The new decade. And talk about shift in, in the energy level and the intensity level. Right now, the Miami Heat. They look like they've just been deflated, and the Celtics are like, hey, we, we know what we've gotten ourselves into. Let's go ahead and finish this game. We have the momentum. It will be Perkins, Glenn Davis, Rajon Rondo, Paul Pierce, Ray Allen for the Celtics. Chalmers. Chalmers, Haslam, Wade, O'Neal. It'll be Celtics ball after the Heat stole a tip. Five minutes of basketball, overtime, number one. Rondo. Lays it down, nobody home. Wade coming up with the loose ball. Goes in for two. Yeah, I think Rondo wanted Perk to come down the lane to roll. And Paul Pierce was going the different direction. Issue with the shot clock didn't start. Joe Crawford, as usual, in charge. And listen to this, Mike. At the end of regulation, the Heat had taken 30 more field goals in the Celtics. 30. They lead by two. Rondo's running. 
goes. You got four and a half minutes if you're the Celtics to win this game on the defensive end. No second shot opportunities. Box guys out. This is a four minute game right now. Rondo has moved into the top spot for Boston with 21 points. Wade, he was looking for contact there, able to save it on the baseline, sends it back out to Richardson. Haslam finally misses one from that spot. Perkins comes down with it. Celtics have given up 16 offensive rebounds in this game and very fortunate with that number to, to be in this game. Ray Allen, no. Davis battling on the offensive glass and is able to come up with it. Kids working hard. That would be a Tommy point right there. And he is under he is undersized and he is really working his tail off tonight. Against a very good player in Hazard. Ray Allen off the bounce, the leaner does not go. Has to cleared out Davis. He went flying by, and here comes Wade the other way. Wade trying to back Rondo down, gives it to Richardson. Richardson travels with it. And you can see the frustration on Dwayne Wade's face. He's given guys an opportunity to make plays. We can't have turnovers really unforced. Slides both feet there. Dwayne Wade has to know Quentin Richardson is our three-point shooter. I can't put him in a position to have to go one-on-one -on -one with the guy. Drive, draw, and kick that ball. Celtics trying to snap the tie here. Paul Pierce straight away three. No. Not probably hadn't gotten a better look tonight than that. Here's four for 12 in the game. Wade can't answer. Long rebound back to O'Neal. O'Neal one on one with Perkins. Spins. Perkins is there. Goes for the fall away. Well short. Rondo comes down with his nice defense there by Perkins. Fourth rebound for Rondo to go with eight assists and 21 points. Six on the shot clock. Ray Allen trying to find something baseline. Sends it back out to Rondo. Has to take it. Nearly banked it home. Good offensive board inside and a foul. I like the activity. I like the motion. Pretty good defense by the Heat. Fighting through screens. And, and real good job here by Perk. Look at this. Boxing out. Putting your body on Jermaine O'Neal. Make him come over your back. Easy call right there. Get yourself to the free throw line. And, and Perk's been short a lot tonight. And yeah. It's not just because we played a lot of minutes. From the beginning of this game, his free throws have hit the front of that rim. Game effort by Perk, you know, he said, suffering from food poisoning. He's played 39 minutes here tonight. Makes the second and breaks the tie. Boston by one. And Miami is going to take a timeout. Two minutes, seven seconds left in the overtime here at the American Airlines Arena in Miami. 41 points for Dwayne Wade, but the Celtics have shown a lot of balance here tonight. All five starters in double figures. The most comprehensive coverage of your favorite teams is on Sportsnet Central. Join us live three times a night at 6 at 10.30, and again at 1 a.m. for the best inside access in town. Glenn Davis will probably play this out. Rasheed Wallace having fouled out of the game. And of course, no Kevin Garnett tonight. Eddie House also not with the team. Hopefully we'll join the team in Atlanta. Eddie under the weather. Hope he's feeling better. Rajon Rondo. The Celtics' leading scorer with 21. All right, here's how we got to this point. Wade with the steal from Ray Allen and dunking it with 
six tenths of a second to go, and it looked like Miami had won this game. There's another look at the steal as Ray kind of lost it on the dribble. And as Donnie pointed out, there wasn't going to be a whistle there, but then it's a play of the decade. <laughs> That's right. Over the top. Great pass from Paul Pierce. Returning the favor. Rondo's the guy who usually finds you. And the Celtics just a, a terrific, terrific play. Perfectly executed. Great play call by Doc Rivers. All right, Miami basketball, 2.07 to go. 104-103, Boston. O'Neal, wow. Had about an eight-footer and yeah. went, went about six. To me, those are the toughest shots in basketball on that baseline from about six to eight feet. You get alligator arms, I like to say. It, it usually comes up short. Rondo dumps it off to Perkins, back outside to Ray Allen. Ray in the lane, Ray to the basket. For two. Can't stress to youngsters at home how important it is to be able to use both hands. Great body control there by Ray. Dwayne Wade kind of overplayed it, and he finishes with his left hand. Celtics a three-point lead. Wade. Chalmers beyond the three-point line, back to Wade. That's the guy they want shooting threes. Missed it. Rebound. Oh, Davis, nice job. Again, getting position on Haslam. I tell you, there's been some great efforts tonight. Perk, Rondo, Pierce, Ray. But Glenn Davis, you got to give him a lot of credit in the way he played this game tonight. Rondo will stop and go on Chalmers. And a timeout taken by Miami, 23. For Rajon Rondo, 8 of 11 from the field, 7 of 8 from the line. He's got 8 assists, too. And the Celtics now in a three-point game with under a minute to go in the overtime. Constant motion. Rondo doing a good job keeping the dribble alive. Nice little crossover with the hesitation. Chalmers, he gets even, and Rondo uses his length. Overruns the play. No one there to help. Rondo finishes. And you know, I talk about this just being fundamentally sound. Dwayne Wade overplays it. Ray starts with the right, finishes with the left. The exact amount of English you need for that ball to go in. Celtics getting terrific balance tonight. Three players now with 20 or more points. But they still have 59 seconds to deal with here, holding on to a 108 103 lead. First of three in a row on the road for the Celtics. A little tough stretch coming up here. Atlanta in Atlanta Friday night. Toronto in Toronto on Sunday afternoon. Then Atlanta again on Monday night in Boston. Then a trip to New Jersey and back to Chicago. The best part about this trip is that you get a day off tomorrow to travel. Go to Atlanta, play a tough game there. You know it's going to be tough down there. You get another day off, go to play an early game Sunday against the Raptors, and then you have more travel time and more rest time to the game Monday. So I think if you could pick out, say, hey, we have six games in nine days, and once we play a couple, it'll turn into about five and six, you have to look for the bright spot, and that's that you get some rest uh, on days in between. But this is, if the Celtics can hold on here, this is a terrific way to start this trip with emotion and also understanding who you are and some of your deficiencies that come out against the Miami Heat team but if you can overcome that's a great way to start your trip Tony Allen in for defensive purposes here in the final minute and he will try to shadow Dwayne Wade they get it two ways Wade a three knocks it down 108-106 Dwayne Wade, not a great three-point shooter, but he likes the left side of the floor. Most of his damage is done left side of the floor, left of the basket. 20-second timeout taken by the Celtics. 44 points for Wade. Well, you know the basket's coming from Wade, or the attempt at least, but where is it going to come from? This is a pretty good job by T.A. He has to play him for the drive, and Dwayne Wade just makes a terrific play and a, a really a great shot. You have to go back to January of 07 to find someone scoring 40 or more against the Celtics. Kobe did 
back in that month. Wayne's got 44 and counting here tonight with 51.3 seconds to go in what is now a two-point game. Again, a situation where Miami just needs to defend. And the Celtics, in order to win this game, you would think are going to have to score at least once more. I would say so, and, I, and I, I wouldn't be surprised if the Heat see Rondo turning that corner and just go ahead and foul him. You know, I, I think you've seen him go to the basket a couple times, and, and at this point in the game, no matter who you are, Good foul shooter, poor foul shooter, average foul shooter. You want to make that guy have to think about it at the free throw line. Celtics by two in the ball. Ray Allen comes. Rondo beats his man in the lane. The floater goes. And, and why you wouldn't make it a little tougher on Rajon Rondo. It surprises me. You know, I understand not putting a seven-footer on the ball when really you can only make one play. But to continue to let Rondo get to the rim and get where he wants to, just, it, 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 I can't think of a reason. You, you guys step up, and here just totally going by Chalmers. Great body control by Rondo. And really nothing to it but just putting his head down and going to the basket. But the touch, the finish, terrific job by Rajon Rondo. 9 of 12 shooting for Rondo from the field. 25 points. Ray Allen's got 20. Perkins has got 20. Pierce has got 17. Rashid has 16. Ray Allen back in the game. Celtics a four-point lead. Richardson will inbound just to our left. Into the hands of Wade. He scored the last nine points for Miami. Nearly lost it. Lost the dribble in the process. Gets it back. A lot of time being used by Miami here. Wade, a step back three. No rebound battle. Davis in the battle. Boston ball. Tell you what, Glenn Davis gets the most out of his athletic ability. He really does. Great timing on that rebound. Goes and gets it at the peak. Perkins <laughs> on the down and out. Celtics able to get it exactly where they wanted to into the hands of Ray Allen. He gets fouled with 17.8 seconds to go and can make it a six-point game. I'm sorry, but Perk is upset. He was open. He was. He was he had, it's like that receiver coming back to the huddle. Him, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he saw the touchdown in front of him, but that was the smart play. You just realize now the Celtics are not over the limit. Everybody had walked up the other end to shoot free throws, and it's... Seventeen point eight stays on the clock. Into Ray Allen and Chalmers grabs him. Good patience by Rondo. Yep. You know you, you're, that clock, you get five seconds, but the clock in your head sometimes goes by two, and you're thinking, I got to get rid of this ball. The mental clock goes a little bit quicker than the actual time you have. But good job there, waiting for his the best free throw shooter, second best free throw shooter in the NBA, and the best free throw shooter on the team to come get the ball. The Heat, I do not believe, have any time out for. That is official. Five, the difference. Terrific comeback for the Celtics here. Down 11 about halfway through the fourth quarter. And not looking good. Well, you know it's a great game and, and really a, a competitive match when we're not talking about Rondo's hamstring or Paul Pierce's knee. We really didn't mention that at all. We mentioned a couple times that Perk you know, was, was dealing with some food poisoning, but the game became the story, which is exactly what this team needs and, and what they want. Wade has his pass picked off by Pierce. That is going to do it. Richardson will not foul. And the Celtics, a tough, tough win here in Miami tonight in overtime. 112 to 106. Pearson Wade. 
exchanging pleasantries. 11 to 5. The Celtics in the overtime come up with the win 112 to 106. Rajon Rondo, 25 points, 8 assists, 4 rebounds. Tonight's play of the game brought to you by Speedy Oil Change and Tune Up, your certified auto center. There it is for the tie with six tenths of a second to go in the game. Pierce, the perfect pass, and Rondo converts it. Let's check in with Greg. He's got Paul with him. Welcome back, Paul. Take me through uh, the play that sent this game into overtime. Well, this is a play that we run numerous times in practice. This is crazy because the knock, knock works on these type of plays uh, at that type of time on the clock. And, uh, you know, we knew that Ray set it up by pushing Wade out. Rondo come around. You know, he's a freak athlete. He just went up and got it overtime and you know that's why we're the Celtics and that's why we play 48 minutes if I remember right you guys ran uh, the same play I think last year but it just didn't go down <laughs> uh, it, it works in practice uh, a few times so you know it's just persistent in what we do in practice and it carries over to the game do you think that Miami was expecting you guys to go for a three I, I mean I don't know you know we, we were down I think they thought the ball was going to Ray because he was down low he was coming up top and I, he was sort of the decoy and uh, I think we're surprised when Rod Rondo, you know, coming around the loop. And it was just a great drawn play, man. Down 11 with seven and a half minutes to go. What turned this game around for you guys? Our, our persistence and our, and our fire. You know, we're a team that's not going to give in. You know, we look at the score and we don't feel like uh, that no lead is too big enough, uh, is too big for us. And we just kept fine, dug in defensively. You know, Wade is, is a monster out there. He's tough to stop. But we started keying on him. Uh, shut the other guys down and, and came out with the win. Did you expect to play 40-plus uh, minutes in this basketball game, overtime or no overtime? You know, not bad for a guy who... Old. Uh, no, you said it this morning at shoot around. You said, man, I'm getting old. I thought we were going to have to get a wheelchair and a walker uh, for you. I think, you know, I'm still getting my time back. I've been out like 10 days and two surgeries. Not bad. You know, I'm just trying to get a rhythm out here. I felt great. The leg felt great. I've been, been getting a lot of treatment on it. And uh, hopefully I continue to just get healthy. But uh, this is a gutsy win, and I'm happy with it. Appreciate it, old man. Here's Paul Pierce, a uh, self-anointed old man at 32. Celtics win it tonight in overtime. Mike Donnie, we'll go back over to you. All right, Greg, thanks very much. Let's take a look at tonight's play of the game, brought to you by Supercuts every time. Check out the numbers for Rajon Rondo. 25 points, 9 of 12 from the field, 7 of 8 from the line, 8 assists, 4 rebounds, one number we didn't have room for up there. He played 50 minutes tonight with that hamstring. Nice job, John. Our next Celtic game is Friday night in Atlanta against the Atlanta Hawks. Always a tough, tough team for the Celtics to play. They're so athletic. 8 o'clock is the game time. Ace ticket pregame live starts at 7.30. Final score here tonight. We have to go to overtime to do it, but the Celtics beat the Miami Heat 112 to 106. Rajon Rondo, 25 points to lead the way for Boston. Coming up after the break, it's New England Ford Dealers postgame live. Let's go to Gary right now for a preview.